It's time for the NFC Championship, and the wait is over for this rivalry game. It's the 49ers and the Rams, and it comes your way next. We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Coming up, it's a battle to represent the NFC in this year's Super Bowl. And we've got a classic in store between the San Francisco 49ers and the Los Angeles Rams. Hello, everyone. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The postseason continuing here on EA Sports. And, man, it is electric in here, and it should be conference championship time. I don't know about you, but my butterflies in my stomach, they have iron wings in this one. <laughs> and every guy I've ever talked to has all said the same thing. This game, the conference championship game, may have more intensity than even the Super Bowl because you know what the stakes are. You're trying so hard to get to the big game that this is the, this is the one that's the real challenge. For the right to head to Los Angeles for Super Bowl 56, it's time for the NFC Championship game. Here we go. A fairly short kick from the 14. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Out comes the San Francisco offense as they are led out by their quarterback, the man known as Jimmy G. That's Jimmy Garoppolo. And we can talk all we want about football being a team game and leaning on different parts and aspects in order to get it done. And that's entirely true during the regular season. Some weeks it's the defense, the special teams running the football. But in the playoffs, all the pressure reverts to the quarterback, and he has to play well and play at a really high level in order for his team to win. And incomplete to open things up. Darius Williams, the one there defensively. And Charles, despite this list of key inactives that we see here, they've obviously still been pretty successful. Give everyone credit for this one, because to me, when that happens, key guys are out, the next man steps up and plays well. But that starts with the organization itself, all the way through. No excuses for guys being out. Finding guys who are capable backups who can step up and play when they need them. And we've seen the results of that. This team knows how to work through things. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. I like it. I like it. I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game. And you know you create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. It really gets them amped up as they go forward. A gain of four, not enough. And it looks like punt time on their opening drive as it's fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. Back deep, Brandon Powell. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So now the Rams will get their first opportunity with a football. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. Here's the first carry of the game for Cam Akers. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Off the fake to Akers, here's Stafford. He'll get this complete to Cooper Cup. And he's brought down after a very nice game. Now that was a fun one to watch. 
punch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. They'll run on first down with Akers. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. The defensive line made pretty easy work of the offensive line that time. And people get tired of the cliche that the battle is won in the trenches. But it's a cliche because it's true. And how about the battle right there? One on the edge, and the ball carrier did not benefit. From the 50 at Stanford. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Well, this defense very strong in that victory from a week ago. It was a little bit enlightening talking with the defense coordinator about their performance last week because the feeling was that it was a good, solid performance. They did what they needed to do to get the job done and get the win, but definitely a few lapses that they're looking to correct. Throwing on third down. Stafford escaping the pressure right. That'll be caught. It's caught. And all the way down to the five. A big play there for L.A. And that's now two big catches on this drive for him. You know, the NFL keeps talking about the possibility of using video for coaching on the sidelines. That's not approved yet, but you can still use pictures. They've got to send his picture down to their defense and say, you see him? Cover him! Now on first and goal, a chance to get a leg up in this NFC title game. They'll run here with Akers. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. And Brandon, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. On second and goal, Stafford, and he's got it. That's cut for a win touchdown. Four yards on the touchdown, Brown, and the Rams have struck first in this NFC title game. Well, we knew they had the crowd on their side. Their defense has already made a stop, and now here's an opening drive touchdown. Yeah, how about the defense making the stop, offense feeling their momentum that they've generated, and turning into points on their side. So now you've got a team working together, and they get the crowd involved fully on their side in this ball game. And in this playoff atmosphere, that 12th man means even more. Extra point by Gain is up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. After the touchdown, it's Gay to kick this one away. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. They'll need to come from behind if they want to play in two weeks as they trail early in this NFC Championship game. Meanwhile, Garoppolo is so complete here to Ayu. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in the play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. They'll run on first down. It's Mitchell. And he'll work this forward for about three. It's second down. 
Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play. It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. So third and two, this quite possibly four down territory, though, if they're stopped. There's Garoppolo to throw. That one caught by Ross Dwelling. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Let's go! Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Garoppolo looks to throw. That's to the right side, complete to Kittle. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over at that time, and it's going to lead to third down. But he kind of forced that one there, didn't he? It's almost like he predetermined where he was going to go with the football. Yeah, and he wasn't really going through progressions. He wanted to go to his top guy. You do that against this defense, They'll make you pay, won't they? Yeah, they certainly will. They react very quickly to the throwing football. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Almost feels like anything you can do, we're going to try and match or do better. We've already seen one touchdown pass from the opposition. They tried to equal it on that throw. And Gold is able to put it through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So a good kick there, and they put the bow tie on it with three points. And let's face it, everybody wants a touchdown. We know that. But in the NFL, defense is awfully good. You're not going to score each and every time. Be able to knock the ball through the post and take the throw. By the way, I said bow tie. I meant just bow. Either not, not the tie, but yeah. Either way. You got it. I just went right past it. And he will be taken down here as the first quarter of play will come to an end. After 1-7-3, the score on EA Sports. The Rams with the football here to begin the second quarter as they get set to start their drive with a first and 10. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Stafford going to give this to Akers. Up past the 25 to the 26, a gain of five. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. They'll try and run for this with Akers. And he's going to have a Rams first down as he'll take this up to about the 33-yard line. And they gave themselves options there on the third down play. We're able to convert on that RPO. Shows a lot of trust with the guy taking the snap, doesn't it? Because you're counting on him to make the right reads and give the ball where it's supposed to go. And he did on that play. So they'll 
It'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Play action. Stafford. He'll let it go deep for Beckham. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. <laughs> I'm laughing to myself because I could just hear in film session. But coach, I started to Dodell Beckham Jr. Of course I thought he was open. <laughs> They'd love to go deep downfield to him, though. Such a threat. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 40. And into the end zone. A pick six for the 49. See if that pick six looms large as this game continues because we've seen plays like that alter a lot of playoff contests over the years. I would agree with that totally. And you often think to yourself, why do they alter it so much? Because after games, don't we hear coaches and players say, well, one play doesn't usually determine the outcome. But I don't think that's really true to you because there's times when we see plays like that and all of a sudden the momentum jumps to that team side. It deflates the other side and they never pick it back up. And then things really go from there, don't they? That's the thing for me. We talk about momentum changes. A play like that is the ultimate momentum change. Gold able to tack on the extra point. And the lead is now 10-7. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. On oh, the return is Brandon Powell. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. Here we go. Get a look at this offense led by Cooper Cup as they make their way back onto the field. And we see his collection of highlights. He's always so tough to cover. He really is, and there are plenty of reasons why. Runs great routes, has an understanding of what defenses want to do against him, and really has a great determination to go up and get the football. He decides it's his and no one else's. And he's decided that a lot so far in this game. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. On first down, they'll start out with Akers. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly. And that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot and stacked him up. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. On the give, this is Akers. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. They'll fake it. Now Stafford. This throw incomplete, nearly picked off. And with his pedigree, he doesn't drop many of those. But third down coming up. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Out of the gun, Stafford. Got a man, it's Higby complete. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers, 35. Good job there of getting his tight end involved because he lines up on the right side of the formation, just works his way across the field. I really like how they were in sync on that one. He spotted the open gap in the zone, and his quarterback found him, and they get a first down. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 35-yard line. On the handoff, it's Akers. And he'll get two or three out of that one as that is going to take us to the two-minute warning. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. 
And a reminder, folks, as we've done all year, we'll send you to Orlando for our EA Sports halftime report coming up shortly. The coach with us, as always, as he will start to look ahead to Super Bowl 56 in L.A. And this will move the chains again as the tackle is going to be made at the 49ers 16. I tell you what, it looks like he's shaking off that pick six just fine. It's not just defensive backs that have to have short memories. Quarterbacks utilize that as well. A much more confident throw right there. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Stafford going to give to Akers on the draw. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. From the gun, here's Stafford. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off inside the 10. And he'll go down inside the 15 at his own 13-yard line. Charles, not only is that an interception, it's one when you were really knocking on the door for a touchdown inside the red zone. You're actually thinking points. No matter what, at worst, you're thinking kicking a field goal and getting three. We might look back on this in the second half and say, you remember when they didn't get points on that drive? This could cost them. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And still plenty of time remaining here in the half, more than a minute. And we'll see if they just want to protect that lead or try to add on to it. Well, with as much time as is left on the clock, I would imagine it would be the latter. I think they're going to try and add on to it. So what they're going to tell the team is very simply, if you can get out of bounds after making a play downfield, terrific. If you can't, everyone hustle to the line of scrimmage, either run another play or clock it and start over again. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And he'll get this one up to about his 14. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. Garoppolo now. Benjamin's got it. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Here comes the 49ers punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Well, the Rams going to take over late in this first half. And with great starting field position and a couple of timeouts at their disposal, they'll certainly have the green light here. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. They'll get this one to cop complete. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout, their second as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. Stafford on first down. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Throwing a Stafford. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far. But on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. Off of play action. Here's Stafford. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked off by Kwan Williams. And a potential turning point as he'll get the football in very good field position late in this first half. So they elect to decline it. And why not? Just go ahead and let the play stand, and they'll take that. Here's Garoppolo on first and ten. 
Drops this underneath. It's Mitchell. Three yards the game there. Second down. Second down at seven. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. This will be spotted just shy of midfield. A 59-yard attempt. Online, but off the crossbar, no good. A long-range effort denied three points at the very end. So we've reached halftime here in the NFC Championship. As we are off to Orlando now to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? All right, Brandon, thanks. As always, what half remains in the battle to see he will take home that George Hallis Trophy and represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. We'll get back to you guys in just a moment. We continue on with a check of the next-gen stats in that first half for the Niners. And it was a tricky half to figure out numbers-wise. They've got the lead, but you'd figure they're definitely talking about ways to get this passing game back on track. Meanwhile, for the Rams, we check on their numbers on the ground in the first half as they know they'll need to be better to overcome this halftime deficit. Our two squads making their final adjustments prior to the second half kick. Which team will be the one standing as NFC champions at the end? To find out, let's get you back to Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Getting set to go again, Matthew Stafford trots back onto the field. And he's had some time to chew on that interception he threw on his last drive back in the first half. Well, normally we say, want well, to get him right back out on the field and play again, right? But as you mentioned, had the halftime, had to stew about it a little bit. Maybe he'll have a chance to relax a little and kind of laugh and chuckle and let it go. He'll hope to respond positively here to start the third quarter. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. They'll go again here with Akers. Runs through the contact. Still going. They can't stop him. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 50 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. Just a terrific run there, Charles, from a running back who is so compact and powerful, and that strength was on display there. Yeah, and that's a run born out of ferociousness. He took on that initial contact, and in his mind just screamed, out of my way, and kept right on going and wound up turning it into a big play. And the next-gen stat shows us the tale of how much yardage he was able to pick up after the initial contact. now first and 15 following the delay of game to throw is Stafford they'll set up the screen here to Akers and he went nowhere well he went backwards back to the 33 the completion but they go in the wrong direction the loss of yards and now they're dealing with a second and long Shotgun snap for Stafford. He'll let it go deep for Beckham. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Stafford now to throw. He completes it to Beckham. 
And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A big play that time through the air. 36 yards. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end. But how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. Here's Akers. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. But they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot. He picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. First and 10, Stafford. He'll check this down to Akers out of the backfield. They'll contain him to just four, second down. You got it. You got it. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Coming up on a second and six. They'll run a draw now with Akers. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. And this one incomplete. And another throw that really could have been, maybe should have been intercepted. That would have been number four. Instead, it's fourth down. Gay's kick is good. And that will knock us up at 10. So they come away from this opening drive in the third quarter with only three, but it does draw them even. Yeah, and that has to be job one, doesn't it? A touchdown definitely would have been nice. We know that. But here, you get back on even terms, and now you get most of the second half to try and get yourself into a position to win. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Taken at the 15, a short kick. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. And their three-point halftime lead gone now, back to a tie game. But, Charles, I don't imagine that changes too much for this offense. I would agree. I don't think it changes much at all, whether it's a three-point lead or a tie game. They know they have their work cut out for them, and they were going to run their offense in the same vein. Garoppolo going to bring the Niners up here first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Second and eight coming up. They'll keep it on the ground. Mitchell, and he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the pass. But in this game, I know what we're seeing from the safeties. They are all over the field. They're not they throw it. Or they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. No coverage bust by the defense here. They did a nice job accounting for everybody, and that led to an incompletion. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. It's a 40-yard punt, four yards on the return. And possession will switch hands first and ten. 
the offense for Los Angeles returns to the field. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and ten. They'll begin on the ground with Akers. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Now, meanwhile, a final play here is incomplete, and that's going to take us to the end of the third quarter of play. One quarter remains for the right to go on to the Super Bowl. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Rams on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and nine. Now Stafford. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. Here's Johnny Hacker now. As he's on to punt for the first time tonight. Returning, it's Benjamin. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. It's a 40-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Niners will go on offense, first and 10. set to get this drive underway and this one likely on the short list for game of the year candidates and boy did it come in a good one here in the playoffs all tied in the fourth with a third to the Super Bowl on the line buckle up everybody no gain on the play it'll be second down looked like he was trying to bounce it outside but no success yeah sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot and trying to get it outside the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down completes it to the tight end kennel that throw good for only a couple it brings up third down not a big window to throw coverage wasn't too bad there yeah they had him under wraps pretty well but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball the Niners on third down just one for five to this point this is third and eight to throw is Garoppolo and that is incomplete. The defense did their job. Fourth quarter, big stand. No doubt about it because the offense has been yelling at him from the sideline. Just do us a favor. Get us the ball back. Give us one more chance to take it downfield. The defense just did them a solid, it appears. And when they get the ball back, they can kind of play free tie game. They're not behind. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Get a look at this offense led by Cooper Cup as they make their way back onto the field. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. A good gain on first, has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. Going right back to Akers. And he's going to have a Rams first down as he's got this past the 35 to about the 37. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. They'll run here with Akers. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game. Trying to establish the inside run. Run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it. You could do worse than a four-yard run on first. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Kawan Williams. And the 49ers are going to have it here at their own 32-yard line. A 
Charles, he's thrown five picks in a game before, and right now, after that one, he's standing on number four. And right now, your defensive coordinator is asking the offensive coordinator, can you do anything to slow this down? Because my guys have to keep running back out on the field. So play calling may come into it a little bit, maybe run the ball a little bit more. But a lot of it depends on the scoreboard. They may have to keep throwing it. Garoppolo going to bring the Niners up here first and 10 at about the 32. Hands it off out of the gun. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Second down and eight. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Mitchell, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Now Garoppolo. That ball caught, Brandon Ayuk. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Getting down to the good stuff, all tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So it's 49er football here as we get your reset. They've got it first and 10 as they search for a go-ahead score. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Working with second and five now. They'll keep it on the ground. Mitchell. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W. And the mind of the play call, all you want to hear is tick, tick, tick. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now... In this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. And to give this time to the tailback. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. All right, my man, this is now where it's risk reward because on defense, you've got to crowd the line of scrimmage. You've got to get in all the gaps, get up tight on everyone, and try and force the field goal attempt here. You can't let them break one big, but you know something when you crowd the line of scrimmage, if they do pop one, it's going to go. Yeah, as I say, could take it to the house, but the magnitude of this possible upcoming field goal, every yard counts. On second down now, it's Mitchell. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in this football game. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. And he'll give it here to his running back. And they'll hustle up to stop him well shy of the first, right around the 15. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. So a big kick coming for Robbie Gould. The kick by Gold is good. And the sideline celebrates as they have taken the lead in the final minute. 
And you know, in an era of cost cutting and maximizing your roster, this is a club that does not skimp on special teams. And in these situations, it pays dividends. And that's great vision by the organization. When the difference between winning or losing depends on who you have kicking the ball, would you rather have a street free agent out there or a solid pro like this? Answer's pretty evident to me. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. So you're right there, but obviously the clock is not your friend. How do you handle this situation? You're thinking two plays. One to get yourself in position for the second one, whether you're able to get into field goal range or you have to try another deep pass, another Hail Mary. But you're trying to get the first one to a receiver, get out of bounds, and give yourself a chance to set things up for an easier shot at it. Let's see if they can do it. Might be easier said than done. Stafford now to throw. He's going to let it fly. Oh, and that nearly ended it. That should have been intercepted, but he cannot corral it, and that is a lifeline there with third down coming up. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. One last throw here for Stafford. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Really a great season. Not a whole lot to hang their head about. Not at all. And you know, the, the winning side, they're so ecstatic. They're going to the Super Bowl. But for the guys that we're talking about, they've got to figure out how it's going to go next year. Are they going to be motivated by this loss? Or will this loss linger? and really make them, you know, make it tough for them to come out of the gate strong next year. Only time will tell, but they've got to find a way to use this loss and use it as motivation.